All right, so let's go ahead and grab our updated material IDs. So we're going to grab the gun high FBX. And we're going to turn our IDs on. Go ahead and bake. So now if I hop through, there's our mesh IDs. And they look just fine. That should be pretty pretty effective. So now we need to resolve what's going on with our normals. I may have caused a bit of trouble for myself by calling the obj and the fbx the same exact file name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-export this selection as an OBJ and I'm just going to throw a different file name in there so that maybe painter understands that it's supposed to import the new geometry that's kind of what I'm what I'm concerned about is maybe painter doesn't understand that F that the gun high OBJ and gun high FBX are different. So uh, this is probably worth mentioning. Let me go ahead and just grab that file real quick. So we've got. So when you do your bakes, your low poly is not going to get updated. The low poly is kind of carved in stone until you actually go to mode or uh, edit project configuration and import your, your updated low poly. Your high poly will be re-imported and rebaked every single time you bake. So you don't have to worry about your high polys updating. But again, I think I might have somewhat confused the issue here by naming my high and my low or uh, gun high FBX and gun high OBJ as the same thing. So I'm actually going to delete that one. So there's no confusion for painter. That's that's my theory for why the normals aren't updating. So let's just go ahead. And again, I've just turned off the IDs because I want to keep those. We're dealing with the OBJ now and all the rest of the stuff can be left alone. So let's go ahead and cross our fingers and give it a shot. And look at that. All right, so I think that was the problem. It's a little bit hard to be sure. It looks like I got a, something weird going on there. Same on this side, which is not a surprise. We still have something happening back here that needs to be addressed. But overall, after a little bit of some trial and error, we've got reasonably good looking bakes. So there's still a couple little minor things that I want to tweak on the painter side before we hop back over to Maya. Um, actually, we're going to be rebaking, so I'm going to just fix the, uh, the Maya thing first. So here's the problem, right? Like, man, that is super weird. What's going on? And if we look at Maya, we look at our high poly, that geometry does not obviously have any issues. But if I select it, what we can see, if we look closely, is there's this one edge poking off into space. And if actually I just did a, I guess, what is that, vertex face? I'm going to leave it at um, faces because you can't really have an edge sticking off into space. I mean, I guess you probably can, but I think Maya would prefer that it's a face. And you can see when I select it, it grabs that whole back area there, which is certainly the most likely culprit behind what's going on with our weird baking error. So I'm just going to delete that geometry. And just to make it easy, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these guys too. And then I'm just going to grab this edge all the way around and see if, if it'll fill this hole for me. So we'll do a fill hole. Nope, doesn't like that. No problem. There's just too much stuff going on. I think it might be a little bit confused. So let's do a bridge. Edit mesh bridge. And then we'll just do the same thing, uh, same thing on this side. G. Okay, and again, we don't have to worry about the UVs on the high poly. It makes no difference. So let's go ahead and re-export. So we'll export selection. We'll do our OBJ. And then I may need to fix the uh, material IDs. So I'm going to export the high FBX as well. Back over to Painter. And we'll go ahead and do a bake on this with the OBJ selected. 
all the stuff left alone. Actually, if, well, we can go ahead and bake it real quick just to prove that this will actually fix the problem. Cool. That looks good, right? All right, so um, that was a little bit of a tricky problem to find. So if you see something like that, just uh, you know, check your UVs first in the low poly, and then if that doesn't look like uh, it's problematic, take a look at the high poly and see if you can find anything there that's uh, looking kind of strange. And finally, actually, let me look at my uh, material IDs real quick. Okay, so there's there's nothing going on back here that's screwed up, so I'm not going to worry about rebaking that. But what we can see when we look at this is I mean, there is definitely some faceting in there that I might be able to clean up in the high poly. But do you see how everything feels kind of wall-eyed here? Like the thickness of this should be completely consistent, but it's but it's not. It's very it's it's all uh, looks like it's kind of being shot in from from an angle. Like if I come over and I look at it that side, I don't know, whatever. I'm trying to find the right view here. Like this one looks okay if I look at it from this way. Anyway, this is kind of what I was talking about with the bake cage stuff, the max frontal distance, max uh, rear distance. What's going on is it's taking this section of geometry because this is all in one smoothing group effectively. Basically what that means is the it's all basically one thing and there's the, the edges that are the boundary edges are hardened, whereas everything else is smooth. So it's basically taking it and it's it's scaling that face up and it's doing it at an angle. It shouldn't be doing it at an angle, but because it's not paying attention to my edge smoothing, it's basically treating the geometry as though everything is smooth. So it's just doing kind of an inflate and it's looking at the high poly rather than being a straight on shot, which we want, it's looking at it from an angle. So a very common thing that you'll get is if you've got a cylinder, in fact, you can kind of see it over here, you get this like looping thing going on here, this little bump. Uh, this, and what this is called is, is it's called scalloping. And it is a result of the same thing, which is basically I'm being, this area here is being baked at a weird angle rather than being baked from head on. Now on cylinders, it's harder to fix, but on flat surfaces, it's super easy to fix. Now what's going on here is painter is basically ignored all of the edge smoothing that we did, which again was basically just looking at the texture borders. So I want painter to pay attention to the very intentional edge smoothing that I did. So to address that, we need to turn off average normals. This is only gonna affect the low poly, has nothing to do with the high poly. I'm gonna leave this guy off. In fact, I don't think we need to worry about the rest of this, but whatever, it's cheap, cheap enough to bake it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and bake gun mesh maps. Again, we're using the OBJ because this is dealing with the normals and not the material ID. So let's go ahead and take care of that. And there you go. It's looking real nice. Now there's still some fastening around here. That might just be, that's probably just the low poly. I'm gonna double check that. I won't make you sit through it. It's pretty easy to fix it. Uh, but because that that geometry was imported, in fact, what the heck, we're here to learn. I'll go ahead and do it. Um, sorry, what I was gonna say is this geometry I added in kind of after I did a bunch of updates on the normals for the, the, the main high poly. I think I just probably need to go in and take care of that. So let's just do that very quickly. select this we don't need the uv toolkit turn off display colors so you can see oh all that nasty faceting so i'm just going to go to mesh display soften harden edges and now it's all pretty and that's very very simple to do so again i don't have to turn this back on for them to still export but i'll go ahead and do it anyway just so we don't get confused go ahead and export selection as obj because this is dealing with normals And back to Painter, and we'll just do a quick rebake. And now they're looking pretty. Okay, so the bakes are good. They're certainly good enough to move forward with this tutorial. Uh, you know, you might want to get in, and this could be like, uh, maybe the low poly isn't really following the high poly enough, or whatever, right? Like, there's, there's almost always going to be some kind of little thing. You can see here, like, that's feeling a little bit lower poly than I would like if this is a major you know, if you were like running around on top of that, I would certainly fix it. But if it's just stuck to the ceiling or whatever, you'd never notice it. So let's just take a real quick review here of how this process uh, sort of needed to unfold. All right, so here is an imperfect, incomplete, but good starting point list of things to check in case of baking errors. First thing you want to do is remove any extra UV sets and you got to check every single piece of geometry individually. 
Um, the asterisk here is sometimes you need extra UV sets, and if that's the case, there's you know you, you're going to have to kind of work around it. Uh, there's probably a way in Painter to disable non-default UV sets. I think it's kind of a new thing that they just they just introduced the ability to to have different UV sets. There's probably some setting in there that I just haven't had to come across yet. But uh, in general, if you're just getting started, you probably only need one UV set. So just confirm that that's the case. Um, confirm that your high low mesh names match exactly in terms of the spelling. You want to have underscore lowercase high and underscore lowercase low. And if you go to Painter, if you go to your bake mesh maps, you can see this is just what they're expecting. You can change this to kitten and puppy if you want. Like it doesn't matter. You just have to make sure that it's consistent so that Painter understands how it can match the high and low geometry. Uh, let's see. Uh, make sure all low poly geometry is assigned to one material. This again, there's an asterisk here. You may have like an outfit set where you have all of the, the body geometry is on one texture sheet and all of the leg geometry is on a different texture sheet. You want to work on them at the same time in Painter. But when you're done, basically what this is, when you have something assigned to one material, you're just going to, everything that's on the material is going to export it. It's going to get exported on one texture sheet. So that's why it's really important that if you've only got one object, everything is on one texture sheet so you don't have to composite it in Photoshop. Um, that's ridiculous. Don't do that. Um, if you have edges hardened in Maya, you want to make sure that you disable average normals. Otherwise, Painter is going to ignore all of your nice edge hardening work. You want to check for general abnormalities with your high poly, like we found that one crazy vert that was sticking out, or edge or whatever it was. If you use ZBrush or any other application to make your high poly, uh, and you do your bakes and you don't see your high poly stuff showing up, import your high poly and your low poly into one scene in Maya and confirm they're still the same size. It happens all the time where the scale gets screwed up, especially when working with ZBrush. The longer you do it, the less you run into those kinds of issues. But initially, if you're just playing with ZBrush for the first time and you've done your retop in Maya, you may run into issues with the scale. So just confirm that everything is, is lined up. Usually, FBX is fine for high, high poly bakes. I would start there. Um, all that stuff I'm doing where it's like, oh, well, I'm going to get the material ID from the, the FBX and everything else from, from the OBJ. That's a pain. That's super unusual. Um, I think that's because this particular high poly geometry is so low poly. Um, if your normals are bruised, you know, you want to try rebaking with the OBJ. If you use OBJ, you may need to bake your material IDs with the FBX. So anyway, that's a, a long lesson for you. Hopefully that's a, a good summary. And uh, if you have any questions, please do reach out. Okay, we'll move on to the texturing in the next section of the videos here.